we're here at the Swiss Innovation Day in Zurich today, powered by Swiss Hospitality Solutions. And I'm sitting here with Tim Weiland, General Manager of the Alpina Start Hotel in Switzerland. Thank you for joining me for this short interview. Thank you. You just morning. took part in the panel about what's the future of luxury in the hospitality industry. So my first question is, what do you think? How does the future of the luxury and hospitality industry look like? Generally bright. I'm, I'm an eternal optimist, right? But uh, I think we do need to separate very much between city and leisure. We've noticed it in the last few mm -hmm. months that the, that the cities are suffering especially from events, convention side, the general business the travel is down. On the other hand, people are very eager to get out. Mm. We've had a fantastic summer, largely, of course, because of the natural resources of Switzerland. It's such a beautiful country. People like to stay here, but they like to get out into nature. That's why the mountains, lakes, um, the rivers, the fresh air, the, the clean water, those are elements which are highly, highly appreciated and, and that's here to stay. So I do believe that the future of, of that kind of hospitality is, is definitely strong for the leisure countryside tourism. Speaking of the great nature of Switzerland and looking at the target group, probably sustainability is a factor for the target group. How does a luxury hotel remain sustainable but still being able to provide a luxury experience? Well, actually, this was one of the uh, brief topics we just discussed. Uh, we have, for example, in the past always had a luxury con connotation of waste. That has been historically opulence a lot of, of, of wasteful behavior, wasteful product was considered a certain luxury. And I think that mindset is changing. I think people are willing to sometimes say that less is more. But then to your question, how does that remain luxurious? So we have this very specific example of a hotel slipper. Right. A simple element, right, which you'll have in every four, five star hotel anywhere around the world. It's a waste product in the end. You wear it one day, maybe two days. Sometimes you go down to the spa, you have another pair there. You've, you, in front of the sauna, you put it, but you can't remember if it's yours or not. You get another pair and they all go in the bin. They're not reusable, they're not washable, and they're not recyclable. So we looked into how can we take one of those elements, because we were going through at least 10,000 pairs of slippers per year. So how can we take that one element and make it sustainable and luxurious? And we've, we went through various different partners and we found what well, we made a, a natural slipper from from wool so it's like mm -hmm. um, just a natural product I know, you can compost over, over a few months it's a regrowable product so it's not like leather where you're killing the animal of course and when you wear them they are just so comfortable i had a guest now i was just telling the story who wore them for three months during lo the lockdown so a quality product, which you can keep for months, if not years, is more sustainable and more luxurious. Then there are many, many aspects like that, which we try and look at one by one in our daily operations. And I do believe that we can, in, especially in the five-star segment, where we can separate slightly more budget to get the better, more sustainable and still luxurious solution. Looking back at the last month of the crisis we're currently in, in hindsight, is there something that you would like to have done differently when you look back at your hotel and your team and the operations? Well, we've been very, very lucky, I have to say, because uh, the, the, the lockdown period, the, the, the peak of the crisis, we can say, happened to be during a time when we were closed anyway. Right. because of our, our seasonality. I run a seasonal operation, we have a winter season, we have a summer season, in between we close. So for us, we were very, very lucky there. What would we have done differently? I think there could have been still more communication in between with, with the staff, with the guests on what is happening, what we're doing, how are we adapting to the situation. I think probably there was a, at some point a bit of a break because we were, there was just so much insecurity. Mm -hmm. Of course, in hindsight, you're always wiser. Right. But um, at that moment, we sort of just blocked everything. We just sent everyone home. We, we sort of just literally shut down everything, which was maybe a bit too much. Maybe we could have still 
continued on, on the communication pattern. You know, what else are we doing for for the environment? What else are we doing for the destination, even though the guests might not be there? So that kind of uh, relationship, which was also very much digital, uh, digitally right. staying in touch with the clients, that could probably have been quite a bit more, just to stay more mm, top of the mind of everyone. All right, and then I want to just ask a last question because that's a very interesting point you're raising. Um, communication with your guests is very important and probably you observed some change in customer behavior. So did that have an impact on your strategy, how you currently communicate with your customers? And if, how, actually? True, true yes, we are, we are digitalizing a lot more. So we've just recently, I mean, we're definitely not the innovators in this, but we've just recently introduced also the, the text messaging with the guests, which is, which is very appreciated. The, the personalization of, of newsletters and so on through mm -hmm. more filtered uh, guest profiling. So yes, that's where digital helps us a lot. And, and I think people are taking more and more time as well to look into that, which before was often just sort of swiped away. They are taking the time and what is important though is never to make it automized. You know, I think it's still very personal. So when we're doing the text messaging, it's it's still it's the concierge messaging. It's guess, a manual work. But, you have but the guest do. is not is sometimes a bit more hesitant to actually go to the concierge desk now and be face to face. Right. Not because because they don't trust the concierge, but because there might be other people around. So where they're quite actually more comfortable to say, okay, I'm in the comfort of my own room, or I'm sitting on the terrace, but I still need this and this done. I still have these and these questions. So let me ask them and get the real time live response when I can. Great, that sounds good. Then thank you very much for your time. I'm wishing you all the best for the months ahead and I hope uh, we all get out of this stronger than before. And I'm wishing you an insightful day today thank at this you. conference. Thank and, you. Yeah, Exciting thank you. Day.